No, holy week three, 10 of 14 games were a one score situation. Heart Attack City recapping it all and Monday Night Football now. Interesting debate in our control room and in our uh, 5 a.m. meeting here on Up and Adams. Uh, and welcome to the show and happy Monday. Um, should we have to start with Sunday Night Football, right? We have to, that's the game everybody wants to talk about. Ooh. This is one of those mornings you wake up and you're like, oh, we really want to talk about the 11 to 10 Broncos win, the sloppiest game that I've seen in a, a long time. Jimmy G, who I defend <laughs> relentlessly throughout my NFL career and here on the show, he was awful. We saw bad offense and good defense. I don't want to start my show like this. I don't want to start my show uh, lambasting the play by the Niners and the play calling by Kyle Shanahan. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. Jimmy made some terrible mistakes. Broncos defense deserves some credit. But Jimmy, Jimmy never should have thrown that ball. Midfield, first down, a little bit of pressure, forces it into triple coverage. I can't. I can't defend him. Throw the ball away, Jimmy. The Broncos were sloppy. It was not cute. But I will say this. They are buying themselves some time. They are learning and accepting and growing as they win ugly. I appreciate a team that can win ugly. Uh, I mean, 9-3 and out, that's about as ugly as you can get now. I think Russell is going to figure it out. There's just so much talent on this team. There was less Hackett drama. They brought in that guy. It all seems to be working. Uh, and so I'm, I'm less worried about the Broncos. Tougher division, of course, tough sledding, but so much talent on that team. The Jimmy side of things, I mean, woof is all I can say. And speaking of woof, we'll uh, play some panic and patience on some of the losing teams in a bit. Raiders fans, 0-3. The numbers are not cute. We looked them up this morning, of course. Uh, so we'll get into all of that. We'd love to hear from you, of course, on uh, the show Twitter handle at Up and Adams Show. Week three, all about close games. Like I said, 10 to 14 were by one score, which is wild. My takeaways are as follows. Number one, I think the AFC South is a bit spicier than we think, everybody. The AFC South went 3-1 and one on Sunday, taking care of the AFC West, the one that we call and crown the most exciting division in the league. Colts take care of the Chiefs, Jags over Chargers, Titans beat the Raiders, and the Texans fall to the Bears. Hey, go Bears, by the way. Uh, but I want to give some love to the Jags team to start the show. How about that? Only here will that happen. They sit atop the AFC South. They're 2-1. and one. They snapped an 18-game road losing streak with this 38-10 win over the Chargers. I got to tell you there, a hell of a fun watch. This team scored 38 points yesterday. Trevor Lawrence stringing together for the first time I've ever seen. Back-to-back -back wins. He was looking sharp. He had two good games in a row. The offense is so fun. James Robinson, great. Travis Etienne, he's getting involved. They put him in at Wildcat. He's out there being quarterback. So, so fun. Keep it up. Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, they were scoring touchdowns. They combined for 157 yards and two touchdowns yesterday. And the defense is good. I see you. Now, we will talk to Lyra Overton, uh, who I became became best friends with over the weekend about the Colts, but I said it. I hung out with these guys, all the Colts players, as you guys all saw, I got pied in the face. They had a nice uh, uh, fundraiser kicking the stigma, and I flew out to Indianapolis, and I'm playing Papa Shot with these guys, and it's Matt Ryan, and it's Unique Ngakwe, and it's Grover, and it's, you know, Julian Blackman, uh, uh, and all these players, and I'm just saying, you guys are going to be okay. It's, it's Shaquille Leonard, me saying, I think you might win. I don't know if Kansas City's prepared for this. If they had a long time to prepare for it, I, th I think they might be counting you out. I'm talking to DeForest Buckner, an emotional game for him, of course, and they pulled it off. They upset KC 20-17. They're now 1-1-1, one and, one and, one, and Matt Ryan did exactly what I would tell him to do, what I would do if I was a quarterback myself. I would do the same mind-numbing eight-minute drive that he strung together, 16 plays, 76 yards uh, in the fourth quarter. Keep the ball out of my Mahomes' hands, always a great idea. So the Colts held the Chiefs to 315 total yards. That very, very rarely happens. And Matt Ryan looked good. And so I'm happy that they got their thing done, too. Titans pick up a win, too. Gotta love that. Uh, their first win of the season over the Raiders. Derrick Henry, I think, looked the best that he has. He's still averaging a career low, 3.6 yards per carry this season. I'd like that to improve. But I see you. The AFC West, listen, the South is coming for you. 3-0 against the West this week. Eagles and Dolphins deserve some love to start the show. I couldn't be happier about this. I stood up here and I said, Eagles are going to go and win the division and make it really deep into the playoffs. And then uh, A.J. Brown's going to be this huge addition. And then I said sort of the same thing about the Dolphins. They're going to shut everyone up, and Tua is going to do that. And now, lo and behold, both 3-0, the only two undefeated teams in the thing. 
And the Eagles have held a lead of at least 17 points in all three games this season. That is dominance. If that can continue, and if they can, if they can sack quarterbacks like they did yesterday to Carson Wentz nine times, Ferris Bueller style, nine times, they're going to go places. And then there's the Dolphins. My goodness, a win over the Bills. The, that's about as impressive as you can get. And to me, it's that they're winning in different ways, right? That's what we have to pay attention to. I like teams that are able to do that. I like teams that can win ugly. And I like teams where last week it was the offense and it was Tua going through the air and putting up six touchdowns. Yesterday, it was all about the defense. It is this whole team coming together to do their thing. My last takeaway for now, what a buzzkill. Let's get Conrad in here. Aaron Rodgers versus Brady. This is just not what you expect, Conrad, to see. Packers and Buccaneers combined for just 26 points in yesterday's meeting. I, you know, they had more turnovers in yesterday's game than touchdowns, four to three. Oh, I know it. I know it. I, uh, again, first time in a long time, drafted Tom Brady this year. I know no one cares about that, but I watched that game very intently, and I have never seen Tom Brady struggle like how he struggled yesterday. It was very hard to watch. Yeah. Every time it seemed like they got a drive going, they fumbled. And it was, it was, it was a very sloppy game. This was the worst game I've seen between two surefire Hall of Famers yeah. in my entire life watching football. Well, Aaron's not clicking with his receivers. I tried to blame the Heat about it. Everyone's like, you were wrong. I mean, it was, was it was it that Rodgers was great and defeated the Heat or that Brady just, you know, come on, play, played a little worse? Like, yeah. that, that was the situation in my head. Uh, no points in the second half for Aaron Rodgers. That's nope. weird. On the Brady side, that two-minute drive, the late time, all of it was weird. No one was open the whole game. That's what I kept seeing. Uh, luckily, Bucks will have... Mike Evans back, which we'd be super excited to see, yep. of course. So I'm not panicking on I would, them, and you are, or you wouldn't. I would, I would panic on Tampa Bay. I mean, listen, I know they don't have Godwin. I know they don't have Mike Evans. He's coming back from suspension. But when you saw this offense play, like he was using Cameron Brait yesterday, like he was using Gronk ten years ago. Yeah. I mean, Cameron Brait, I. That's a name that I that hasn't been relevant, I've, in my opinion, in the last couple seasons. He hasn't been used as much. They've had other tight ends there, and. It's, he was like the only guy that could get open. I mean, they brought in Cole Beasley last minute. Cole Beasley tried doing what he could, but it got to the point where I think— He had one good catch, right? One good catcher, but yeah. He did, he did, but like Tom towards the end of the game— we were hearing he's going to be so heavily involved. It's going to be Cole Beasley everywhere. Those are the reports. Yeah, but at the same time, like I think Tom Brady's like anger like completely mm -hmm. folded over in the fourth quarter where like he was just like, wow— this is what this is. Like, he wasn't yelling. He wasn't screaming. He was taking bad sacks, and he was just getting up, looking over at the sidelines like, somebody, like, anybody, help me? And it was it was hard to watch. It really was. It was a very hard game to watch. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, Packers have who this week? They have a gimme game against New England, I think, Yeah. back at home. Yep, so yep. we'll see. What's your background talking about today? Uh, my background, I mean, listen, I mean, Come on, those Dolphins. More, more so than anything, watching that Dolphins game against the Bills, extremely impressive. And, you know, just kind of like you talked about Aaron Rodgers having to go down to that, uh, that Florida heat, the Bills going down to South Florida was a very big issue for them. I mean, Stephon Diggs was cramping up every 10 minutes. Yeah. He couldn't stay on the field. Josh Allen throwing the ball 60-plus times. You told me this. You said last week because I was trying to – I was throwing my, you know – I was trying to get my ideas together, and you and I spent an, an, an awful, awful lot, lot of time, time together. together this weekend, <laughs> which we'll have to get into at some point. But you and I bonded, but even before we left for Indianapolis, I told you that there's something about Florida, and you couldn't agree more. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, there there is a big difference. I mean, growing up, I played a lot of sports in my life, has a lot of friends from Florida that came up north and ended up playing some level of college football up in Ohio. And the biggest difference to them always was, like, there's no way a lot of these guys on my team up here in the north could yeah. have made it through those practices down in Florida because they are. They're excruciating. Yeah. They're, it's it's a different breed of athlete that comes from Florida, Texas. It's It, it really is. It's unbelievable. The, the fact that they can play in these conditions and that they can continue to stay on the field is Probably one of the more impressive things in football that not a lot of people talk in about. In Miami, those players are used to it. They're training down there. They get it. I've always, you know, there's always been a lot of lines you can cross and point from New England having to travel down there late in the season, early in the season, and the lack of success they have coming from New England where they're used to those conditions. But um, we did at least get in this Dolphins game the butt punt. <laughs> the butt punt. I, Show I, me I, this. I, I know somewhere we have the butt punt. And look at this. This was magical. I mean, this was only this is one of two plays historically yesterday that, you know, Mark Sanchez now is no longer the lead person for uh, the butt fumble. It's now the butt punt. Butt punt is in in 2022. The Why butt fumble is out. Why should I care out. about the butt punt? 
Well, the butt punt, honestly, was probably one of the most crazy things because it couldn't have worked out any better for Miami when it happened. I mean, to run into your own player in the back of the end zone and for this to happen, but the fact that Miami's defense was able to stifle them on the last possession with Josh Allen trying to lead him back, uh, it wasn't it wasn't great, but look wow. at this. I mean, what an amazing photo. How often do you see stuff like this happen in the NFL? NFL account saying, is this the greatest photo of all time? What a question. Oh, and Hit Charmin. Oh. Charmin, these cheeks are going in and need something soft. Check the DMs. You got to love it. Look at this. Some Out. branding happening. Mark Sanchez, whoa, 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 whoa. Stay out of my lane, bro. <laughs> That's Thomas Morstead. We love to see it. We love uh, some joshing in the NFL. Talk, talk to me about the other thing you saw. Oh, here's Tyreek Hill. I've never seen a butt pump, but next time Sherfield's going to catch it with his butt cheeks because he's got strong <laughs> butt cheeks. Um... I think I took a nap during this. I was not. I was not around for butt cheek, butt cheek Charmin Twitter. I was around for last night's. I don't. You know, I want to love Jimmy G. Ugh. The safety. Break it down. I mean, listen. I know we had the safety play too, but the fun thing about this safety is, in which a lot of people won't give credit for, Jimmy G actually made the right play here. I mean, they end up losing the game, but he threw a pick six on this play. He stepped through the back of the end zone, which, I mean, Orlowski. Dan Orlowski, Orlowski! was probably. He we was he him. was hands down the darling of Twitter last yeah, night. Yeah, Tariko got that out real quick. Look at this. I've Freedom. never been happier. Freedom. I mean, Orlowski has been seeing these tweets for what, the last 10 years? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I think Orlowski's okay. You're doing okay, buddy. You're crushing it over at ESPN. We love to see it. Step Brothers. Very cute. Very cute. It was. Not, not great photoshops. It looks like a horror movie. A little face-off, Don Travolta action, Nick Cage, but that's okay. Uh, big news yesterday. How oh. casual Apple Music and the NFL to, during a nine-game slate, just throw out there that Rihanna's, that Rihanna's doing the Super Bowl halftime show. And can I tell you, I, can you think of a Super Bowl halftime that you've been more excited to see? I, I literally yesterday, when it happened, was like over the moon excited. Rihanna, to me, is probably a top five artist, in my opinion. I love Rihanna so much. I mean, LeBron obviously loves it as well. But who doesn't love Rihanna? Like, she's been gone the last, what, five years, basically? Well, she hasn't been gone. She's been busy launching busy, a, you're right. a lingerie empire, uh, Savage Fenty, and, of course, Fenty Makeup, which, if you saw what I looked under here, you would understand <laughs> how important my Fenty contour stick is. And my lip gloss. I lose her gloss balm every day of my life. Really? She's Fun. an incredible businesswoman. I've been saying, and she gets asked this on every red carpet every for the past five years, new music, yeah. question mark? Like, can we get, and so you got to think, you got to think we're getting a new album here. Don't you dare do this months. to me, Kay what Adams. No, don't, she, don't. Why would, they, why, would they, why would they come to the conclusion that it's her instead of somebody that has new music a la a Harry Styles or, you know. It, does, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you get. Rihanna Rihanna is going to bring the bangers no, from the past. Oh, I mean, regardless. She will, but she's going to have new music. Watch. I mean, if she comes out with new music, then, I mean, can consider this the best halftime show ever for me. Yeah. Ever. She could, I mean, she could bring out Chris Martin from Coldplay. She could bring, I mean, she's done collabs with, she can bring out Jay-Z. That would be fun to watch. Now that would be something. She's done, she's done with Eminem. She's done it all. She's she done has. it all with everyone. So congratulations to NFL fans for getting the gift that will be Rihanna oh. for 12-ish minutes in mm. Arizona when the Eagles are facing the Bills. The I Super cannot Bowl. wait for it, Kay Adams. Last, little one, re -re? last one for you because you are my oh. eyes and ears, all things Seahawks. This is I it. I did not see this. And Play I don't it. think I care. So oh. break it down. Kay, look at this Corgi race. I look. don't care. I, I, I know you don't, Kay, but the world cares. Every, Tell look me at this. Why. We, we, we have a on the loose Corgi after an amazing Corgi race and during like one of the breaks in the Seahawks game. I mean, me personally, you know how big of a dog I am. This literally brought me a smile ear to ear yesterday. I just thoroughly cannot get enough of this, and they couldn't catch the Corgi. I mean, come on. What's, what's better than that? Having a bunch of people trying to catch a dog. And at the same time, too, in the Seahawks game, happened against the Huskies, too. There was a drone over the stadium. They I had can't. You lost me five minutes. You were literally you lost my attention the second. Oh, all right. Well, it's we'll, over. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get off the corgis then. It's over. Then. Love you. We're done with the corgis. We are not done with the panic setting in for some teams. And I want to say blanket statement. I was yelling at you this morning, like, why are we doing a panic or patient segment? But then I looked at the teams that you emailed me and said, what do we do with the Raiders? And then I looked at the, uh, the numbers behind that. What is the, the situation as far as statistics, when you start a season 0-3 and, and making the playoffs, it is bleak. The Titans get a win, and the Raiders couldn't pull it out. A bunch of panic and patience, Kay. We're going to get to it in the next break, right? A little panic and patience, right?
feel like I've been negative enough to start the show, dragging Jimmy G, who deserves it after yesterday's performance and loss to the Broncos. 11 to 10, weird scoring, low scoring game. Credit to the Broncos defense uh, for pulling out a win there. And now we have to talk about some patience and panic because I would like to be more positive in this segment. It's only been three weeks. Everybody should relax, right? But there are some teams that are underperforming and the numbers are not good. Speaking of numbers, 93.7 is the number in Pittsburgh where you can hear Andrew Filipponi, who is here. You can check him out on FanDuel TV all of the time. Thank you for hopping on. Here's what happened. Last minute, you decided to come on, which I love about you, because we thought, you know what, we're going to spend, uh, Andrew, all of the A block, the beginning of the show in, in TV terms, talking about this exciting game last night, and it sucked. Ugh. It wasn't a great game. So we're not going to do it. Instead, we're going to enter the panic room. Mm. Mm. First up, uh, I would like to talk to you and get your gauge on the Las Vegas Raiders. What's your temperature here? They lose to the Titans yesterday. It's 24 to 22. They fall to 0 and 3. Woof. I'm flattered that when you thought positive, you thought to call me. There so you thank you for that, Kay. Uh, that's probably a first in my professional career here as a part of FanDuel TV. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, no, I am panicking. I think my default setting is usually to panic just overall in life. And I think the Raiders are in that spot. 0-3 is yeah. close to a death sentence. When you are 0-3, only one team uh, since 2000 has come back from 0-3 to make the playoffs. And that was the 2018 Texans, K in a brutal AFC South. They ripped off nine straight wins. They made the playoffs. I do not see that in the cards for this LA team. Only three catches for Devontae Adams yesterday. Where is Chandler Jones, their big addition? It's so true. Seems to me like he's in witness protection. They're in that stack division as far as quarterback play goes. No, I'm panicking on the Vegas Raiders. Their defense, to your point, Chandler Jones, I was asking that this morning. I go, what is this? They have two sacks, two takeaways through th all three games this season. The numbers are bleak. You're talking about 2000. Let's open that up to all of NFL history, everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, only six teams ever have gotten to the playoffs after an 0-3 start. That is not great. It is a tough division. They've got three losses this season by a com combined 13 points, which I like. That means it's, you know, things can break their way and they can get going. That's okay. But penalties and drops yesterday, those are also fixable. So I want to be patient on this team, but converting just one of 12 third downs yesterday, that's terrible. They have Devontae. They've got to fix the drops and penalties. They have a closed door meeting with McDaniels and the ownership yesterday. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I think I'm, I think you're like right. I think yeah I think I'm gonna go go with panic on this team just because the numbers are so bleak when you start over in that way now let's talk about a team that is not 0-3 but close it's your Pittsburgh Steelers they're sitting yep. there at one and two they had losses to the New England Patriots of course and the Cleveland Browns uh so your thoughts on them panic or patience well, FanDuel agrees with me on the panic part of this because to make the playoffs on FanDuel, the Steelers are plus 590. Okay. So that means if you bet 100, you'd win almost $600 if the Steelers rallied to make the playoffs. FanDuel's telling you it's unlikely. I agree with them. They've still yet to win a game since TJ Watt was drafted when the defensive player of the year is out of the lineup. And he's still out for at least a couple more games. But he's K, coming which back. Won. He is, but he's coming back for at Buffalo at Miami, at the Eagles, they at Tampa Bay, they have a gauntlet in the middle of the season. Mitch Trubisky, this offense is so careful, K. It's like they're afraid he's going to make a mistake. He is dead last among quarterbacks in yards per attempt. They are the definition of dink and dunk right now. Yeah. I'd love to see him open it up but I don't have the confidence that they'll do so, so I'm panicking on the Steelers. They lost back-to-back -back games. That's ugly. They think they have four touchdowns through three games. That's really, really ugly. They're dinking and dunking. Najee Harris doesn't look completely right, looked nope. better last week. They do get T.J. Watt back, though, and you're being negative. They've got the Jets, and I'm thinking, yeah, if they lose against the Jets, this is a terrible situation. Aditi King Kabwala quote tweeted you, and I love her. She did. So so I just, we have to show this. She likes she said, to dunk on me. Yeah, and she kind of did. It's week four, buddy. <laughs> In 2015, the Steelers lost to a Ryan Mallett-led Ravens team that was 4-10. Remember Ryan Mallett, everybody? Former Patriot. Come on. They still made the playoffs. It is way, way too early to give up on a season. I agree with you. Tomlin always figures it out, Aditi, and he deserves the benefit of the doubt. But I will say this. 
and you lose to the Jets and you're toast. There's no Benjamin Todd Roethlisberger walking through that door, Kay. That's the big difference. You can't lose to the Jets. You're toast. All right, Bill Belichick, New England Patriots, one and two. They have two losses to two of the best teams, though, which is why this is an interesting one for panic or patience. They lose to the Dolphins. They lose to the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, you know, and that they're combined five and one this season. So that, to me, is a patience-giving vibe. You want to go three for three on panic? I'm pessimistic pony Man. here because I'm going to panic on them too. I am. You're in the same division as the Dolphins and Bills. Does anybody out there with the Mac Jones leg injury at the end of yesterday's game think that they are better than any than either of those two teams? No. I mean, that puts you between a rock and a hard place now to make the playoffs. If you are third best in your division, you've got three other division winners. That's five playoff teams ahead of you right there. There's only yeah. two more spots. So yeah, who's who's next man up? Brian Hoyer, who's older than my dad. I mean, hey, I, offensively, easy in the ageism. Matt, Matt the Patricia Collin plays. Yeah, uh, turnovers that I don't expect out oh. of the uh, Patriots, where they're beating themselves. Kay, no, I'm panicking on them. I'll say, yeah, they don't have the firepower. That's what it comes down to. They simply don't have the firepower. And you're looking at them. I think they very much miss J. C. Jackson. I think their defense really, really misses him. Offensively, it's the Mac Jones injury. He's you know getting tests. His ankles hurt. We don't know all of the details there. Uh, but the offense keeps turning it over, and the defense isn't getting it done or making plays. There's no spark. There's no firepower. Hoyer, the destroyer, 16 and 23 in a career as a starter. He's lost 11 straight starts. To your point. They're not going to get it done. I am in full panic mode, but I am in full patience mode for the long ball with this team. They will be back. They will figure it out. They spent a ton of money. And I think all New England pundits, all New England very smart, savvy fans understand that this wasn't a, we're going to make the playoffs this year. It was a, we're going to have to take our lumps. We're going to have to develop, grow, draft, spend money, and then it'll be okay in the next couple of years. Uh, your thoughts on the Saints? They're one and two. Uh, they lost to the Panthers 24-22. So I think there's patience here. They're plus 172 to make the playoffs, K. What they have going for them is this. They now play three games, one in London, and then the next two are at home. Okay. So they've got a, a run of games here. The schedule sets up nicely for them. You know, Kamara, Thomas, getting these guys healthy. Olave had a huge game yesterday, quietly, in the loss to Carolina. And if I'm New Orleans, I would say this. In a watered-down NFC where Jameis has, I'm watching that game, this debilitating back injury where I'm cringing hearing it described in painstaking detail. Right. You, you, you have Andy Dalton there for a reason. We know what Andy Dalton is. He can win you, you start him three or four games, he might go three and one, two and one for you. Okay. So given the way the schedule loosens up for them, they're going to London to play Minnesota. I would play Dalton, just have him spread the ball out to their weapons. And then try to get Jameis back healthy. So that's why I'm telling Dennis Allen, patience, go with Andy Dalton for a few games. Go, I mean, that, that's quite a take here. My take simply is that I'm nowhere near being done with them. They're t they have too much talent. There's too many good things happening. All the teams we've gone through, I'm trying to find a bright spot. And there's plenty of that in New Orleans. Look what Chris Olave is doing. The issue is these eight giveaways over the last two games. Yep. Eight giveaways. To me, though, that is something that is fixable. That's the bad side of Jameis. Jameis is clearly hurt. Everybody's underplaying and underreporting this. It's like, oh, no problem. His back is fractured. But with the NFC so open... You yep. know, uh, and and what they're doing, they just got to put more points up because they're averaging like a putrid 12 points per game over the last two in that loss to Tampa Bay. And, in you know, they only put up 14 in that loss to Carolina. They're still super talented. I'm not ready to completely give up on them. The defense keeps them in games, which you love to see. It's those interceptions Jameis has, five in the last two games. Uh, but I'll just have to say... Allen's got to get it out of him. Allen's got to be the guy who, you know, Sean Payton, that's the question. Can Allen do for Jameis what mm -hmm. uh, Sean Payton started to do before that injury last year, which is get him on the right track, get him to be less aggressive and to sort of walk the line. Uh, I love that sweater you're wearing. It looks Saints-themed. It looks like there's some Saints colors sure. in there. There's a, there's a subliminal yeah. Saints message there. I, okay. There always is with me. That's just the <laughs> truth here. Now, finally, let's go to the one and two Cardinals. So much talent, so it's hard for me to jump ship. They lost to the Rams yesterday, 20-12. to 12. Rams didn't look that great either. No. Yeah, I think there's patience here for a couple of reasons. Number one, I think the NFC West, it's opened up in a way Seattle we never thought of as a contender. And now San Francisco. It's not just Garoppolo in for Lance, which we see changes how dynamic their offense can be. He's more of a game manager. 
There's also now the Trent Williams injury. They lost the best left tackle in football in that game last night, and their offense changed from that point on. They couldn't protect the quarterback. Garoppolo's, you know, didn't have the confidence. He's falling away from throws. He's running into the back of his end yeah. zone. And then as far as Arizona goes, Kay, their two losses right now are to the Chiefs and Rams. They're going to get DeAndre Hopkins back. So it's hard to come up with seven teams that are going to make the playoffs in the NFC. So given their odds, plus 320, I think that is a very good bet on FanDuel to take them to make the playoffs. I, I've always defended them and talent rises and they'll get DeAndre Hopkins back. But I'm, I'm leaning towards panic here because they're so Uh-oh. confusing. Well, listen. They are, they are lifeless one week, and then they're amazing the next week or per quarter, and it doesn't start that way, and then it ends in heroics from Kyler Murray. But they are a Hunter Renfro fumble away from being 0-3. Let's True. Just, let's just be honest here. They desperately need DeAndre Hopkins back and for that suspension to be over. Only Mitchell Trubisky is averaging fewer pass yards per attempt than Kyler Murray this season. Then there's the injuries that I'm worried about. Rondale Moore dealing with a hamstring. We saw A.J. Green get hurt yesterday. So I just – they're so inconsistent that they're becoming, you know, like it's always fun to date to date the guy who's, you know, not up and down, but like you never know what you're getting and it's exciting. But then, Andrew, at a certain point, you want to feel comfortable in your relationship and that's something that the Cardinals have taken from me. Yeah, I was never that exciting guy. I can tell you that. I was always kind of the fallback safe option. So that analogy actually worked beautifully for yeah. me. And I guess my wife pretty much just settled is the conclusion that I just I did, came up with. I didn't right say there. that. You did. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, no, you're, you're and your wife are adorable. Stop it. Filipponi, you are the best. Up next, we have a segment called He Is Him. Did I do that right? Isn't that what NFL players, uh, players are doing? Stefan Diggs? I am him. He is him. I don't quite know. But, uh, yeah, Devontae Smith is him, and he is. And pretty much everybody on the Eagles is. Do you have a He Is Him for today? Hit us up. Week three, almost in the books. We'll, of course, give your preview coming up with the Cowboys. Ooh, Cooper Rush taking on Daniel Jones tonight to wrap it all up. But this is what Conrad Company calls a waterfall, a tweet waterfall. And he knows it's my least favorite thing we do on the show, yet somehow he keeps doing it. I'm sorry, Kay. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's just only one way to show all of the hymns of the week. So that's that's why I did it. What is what is this? All right, Kay. I think, I think everyone's seen on Twitter, you know, like everybody is him nowadays. You know, everyone, all the top performers, everyone's like, oh, this guy made a great play. He is him. I thought everyone was got that dog in him. Well, I mean, there's, wait, hold on now. Not that many guys got that dog oh. in him. There's only a certain amount of guys that got the dog in him. But there's lots him. of he's that are him's? There's a lot of he's that are him's. Okay, I mean, te- it, teach me. I, I've seen Stefan Diggs. Well, th- this all started because Stefan Diggs turned around and said to the crowd that I'm him. Right? I am him. Well, that is one of the original ways, but it, ca- it came from a social video, basically, where it started, where a guy in a grocery store was yelling at somebody. And he's like, you don't want this, buddy. I'm him. Basically saying that, like, hey, I'm not the guy you want to mess with today. And that's kind of followed through. I don't know if I like this, but tell me tell me who's him. Give me somebody that he is. All right, who, let's start with it. The, of the, whom he is, in fact, him. The first he's him of the week has to be Jalen Hurts because Jalen Hurts. Through the air, baby. Yeah, he is definitely him. Jalen Hurts had a tremendous game yesterday. No interceptions. No interceptions, Kay. 340 yards passing, three touchdowns. I mean, this guy was known as like a one-dimensional threat coming out of college. He can only run. He can only scramble. But he is electric throwing the football. And then we have this, look. Jalen Hurts said he made the play on the TD call to uh, Devontae Smith at the end of the half. Time was winding down, no timeouts, so he took it upon himself. The kicker, the play he called wasn't even in the game plan for the week. And you know why that played work at the end of halftime, Kay? Yeah, what? Because he's him. I'm telling you, he keeps throwing like him. Him will find himself in the Super Bowl. Uh, Devontae Smith had career De- highs across the board yesterday. Yes, he Is did. He in fact, him? Uh, Devontae Smith confirmed him. Yes, after yeah, after seeing what he did yesterday, he was all over the field making tons of plays. I mean, I'm talking deep balls, I'm talking slant routes. He was hitting every single route possible, just making acrobatic catches everywhere. Eight catches, 169 yards. Okay, he is our second. He's him of the week, and it's perfect to go with Jalen Hurts. Seven catches, 156, and a touchdown. And that's just in the first half, people. 15 catches over the last two games combined. Everyone's like, oh, no. And then there was the Batman cape, which I was tw- I was texting you guys about. Like, what? I go, what is this? And the whole group text, nine people go, well, it's Batman. And Batman. I'm like, don't mansplain Batman to me. I understand what Batman is, but is this something this team is doing? They're putting on a cape. They had the dog masks back then. There's some... There's some Similarities there, well, and we're going to be Kate, following that. Kate, it's it's because there there is no Robins on that team. They're all the Batmans. 
that's why I came. I know, you, you, I literally texted you, what is this? And you go, it's Superman. It's super, and I didn't watch the video and you're I said very, super, I thought it was a cape and you were jerk. like, no. How about, uh, left, I think One Lamar more. Jackson we, was him. Yes, he was. Lamar Jackson has been him the entire season. I mean, is there a single quarterback that has put the Four. team more on his back than Lamar Jackson this year? I don't think so. You know why? Because he's him. And that's what Lamar oh. Jackson does. He puts the team on his back. Do we not have footage for you, Pork? I kind of, I kind of like watching you have to. No, tap it's okay. Dance I love here. it, Kay. I love Keep it. Keep tap dancing. I think I just, great. I, I just bring I mean, the smiles. Uh, I mean, he has insane games so far. He's the first player in the Super Bowl era with three or more touchdown passes and 100 or more rushing yards in back-to-back -back games. And he's crushing it. He had four touchdown passes again. He's making Duvernay a thing. And then you have Harbaugh who's like, you know, at the end, like, what are they going to do? They got to pay him and they're going to, hopefully it happens sooner than later. They need to pay this man. I think everyone in the world knows it. I mean, Lamar Jackson is now making it to a point of where you have to pay me. There's no longer a situation of like, we might not give you this fully guaranteed contract. You have to because he is him and he is that good. What is the Lamar Jackson tweet on diamonds that's in my little rundown here? What is that? Lamar Jackson basically had a great tweet after the game basically saying, I'm shining so much with my diamonds. And I mean, again, yeah. Only only QB with three passing touchdowns in three games, just like you said. Do we have a diamond tweet? I'd like to see that. No? No. But right. you, know, you know what we do have? We have some tremendous reporters for the Dallas and New York Giants game this evening. I'm very excited about that. And one of them, of course, uh, is going to be joining us right at the beginning of next segment. So let's do it. We'll get out of here and we will talk about Monday night's game in the NFC East, what you should be looking at. Uh, and I'm rooting for Saquon. That's all anyone needs to know. Everyday wins make your day so much better. It's just true. That's why FanDuel Casino has a new daily free-to-play game. Reward Machine is a free game that gives players a chance to win up to $2,000 in casino bonus every day. All you got to do is log in daily and spin for a free chance at rewards. FanDuel wants you to win. Play Reward Machine for a free chance at Everyday Wins only on FanDuel Casino. They treat me like the enemy. Hey. Oh. They treat me like the enemy. They treat me like the enemy. We got a big one tonight. Woo, woo, woo. Cowboys taking on the Giants. I like the Cooper Rush thing. He's got this quiet confidence about him. He's undefeated. And then there's the undefeated Giants who want to join the only other two teams in the NFL to be undefeated. That would be, of course, the Eagles and the Dolphins. But it all gets played tonight in New York. NFC East matchups always great. And let's bring in a great guest to cover one side, the Dallas Cowboys side. Uh, she covers it for Sports Illustrated. Please welcome Bree Amaranthus. Bree, hi. Hey Kay, how are you this morning? I'm so good, thank you for being here. Let's talk about Cooper Rush a little bit because I'm feeling this and I love Dak and, and he leaves, but backup swagger is what I'm seeing out there. Has the way he's played and the way he carries himself changed the timeline for Dak Prescott? Yeah, Cooper Rush is calm, cool, and collected. I feel like running back Ezekiel Elliott said it best when he said, quote, Coop knows his leap. Cooper Rush has that confidence that you don't see in a lot of backup quarterbacks. It's been really fun to watch. Jerry Jones was actually asked that exact question. If Cooper Rush continues to win games, does that change Dak Prescott's timeline at all? And of course, Jerry Jones goes, oh, us, we would never rush back Dak Prescott. Prescott is supposed to get those stitches out of his right hand today, and he could have his timeline bumped up a little bit so that he could play against the Philadelphia Eagles on yes. October 16th. Ooh. So that's kind of where we're at with Cooper Rush and Dak. It's great, and you know, it's, it's a, a very rare thing that you would think a backup quarterback, bright lights, Monday night football, big meaningful game, even though it's early in the season. I'm not worried at all that he's going to wilter under the bright lights of it all in New York. I think he's going to have a great game, actually. Uh, and as far as, uh, let's talk about some of these receivers that are banged up, right? Because one of the biggest concerns was the lack of weapons. How does the offense build off last week's, week's win against the Bengals? Oh, for sure. I think you have to watch Noah Brown tonight. Um, him and Cooper Rush at training camp in Oxnard, I was there, and these two were just showing off the entire time. They obviously have a really great connection, and I think it's great for Cooper Rush to have Noah Brown. Um, we're also going to be on Michael Gallup watch, who yes. could make his big debut tonight. Not only could he make his big debut he might start because tight end Dalton Schultz is questionable for this Monday night matchup. So big night for Michael Gallup. Mike McCarthy saying it's not like he's going to play 70 games, but we're going to have to see. I think if Gallup gets out there, it's going to be huge for CeeDee Lamb, who has 
obviously as fantasy football managers know had some issues this year so far having that separation he's got all of the attention on him from opposing defenses um so getting Gallup back is going to be huge and then of course watch Noah Brown he needs somebody I need we need Gallup in there that's a guy who I think could when he's healthy put up a thousand yards and be a huge part for this offense especially benefiting from seeing some single coverage with our guy uh, CD out there getting all of the love from defenses now Micah Parsons what I mean he's terrifying for anybody he's an absolute nightmare what have you seen in Micah as you're so close to the team that's allowed him to pick up right where he left off last season and then somehow get better this season even though it's Micah's second season with the Cowboys he is undoubtedly the leader of this defense in the locker room on the field all of the Cowboys players would agree that in a race of five yards Micah Parsons would beat anyone he's so quick he's got the best football IQ especially for only a second year guy he's got four sacks entering this game but he also has had some cold symptoms this week yeah and Micah is not one to uh he likes to compare himself to the greats so he's not shy about that and he did just just tweet a gif from Michael Jordan's flu game. Of course. So we'll have to see if Micah Parsons is going to have a flu game against Saquon Barkley, which of course is a lot easier said than done. But it does appear that Michael will play tonight. Um, I've, after all of those cold symptoms, he did miss a couple practices this week. Okay. But he's a lion. I mean, he'll he'll say that he he doesn't want to be called a linebacker. He wants to be called a lion backer. A lion backer. We love that, Bree. We appreciate you, Bree Amaranthus from Sports Illustrated. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy the game tonight as we flip to the other side of the matchup, bringing in Pat Leonard, who is a beat writer and columnist covering the Giants for New York Daily News. Uh, hello, sir. How are you? You. Hey, great to see you. I'm doing really well. 2-0 in New York, right? What could be better? It's so exciting. I wish I was there. <laughs> I moved to LA at the exact wrong time. But I got to tell you, Bree got me a little hype about the Cowboy side of things. They've got a, a confident backup quarterback. They have a dominant four-sack Michael Jordan gif tweeting a <laughs> defensive nightmare, of course, and Micah Parsons. How is Dayball? Let's start, start there because it's clearly been an immediate success. He's a culture changer right away. What makes him yeah. different than most of the recent head coaches that you've covered? A couple of things, Kay. Number one, uh, Dayball, the players really appreciated that they went for two to win the game in Tennessee in week one because the players felt he spent all off season saying, we'll be aggressive and put the games in your hands. And then he did it at the first chance he had. So they felt like he was a man of his word. And even though the offense hasn't been incredibly explosive, when Dable and Kafka go in at halftime, mm. so the Giants have been outscored 19-6 to six in first halves, but they have come out and outscored their opponents 34-17 to 17 in the second halves, a major part of why they're winning. He's running the ball, even though he didn't want to run the ball in Buffalo ever with Josh Allen and that offense. Every second half, he goes back to the bread and butter, which is Saquon Barkley, and he finds ways to win every week. And we'd love to see it. 2-0, and oh, big stuff, big game tonight to wrap up week three. Now, Kenny Galladay's situation made news this week. He's allegedly, apparently, reportedly, you tell me, unhappy with his playing time. <laughs> How has Dable handled it, and has it been a distraction? Dable uh, strikes me as the kind of guy who's like, this is a business, this is how it is, shut up. You hit it right on the nose, Kay. And, you know, he is a player's coach and players like him, but he's not soft. He's benched three different players, including mm. Galladay, so far in order to get the best team on the field. Now, Kenny's not happy, and Kenny doesn't feel like Dable and the head coaching staff were transparent. He feels like, I don't know why I was benched. So if you're Dable, first-year head coach, you got to tread, you know, you got to tread lightly there. You have to be transparent and consistent. That said, Kay, if the Giants are winning and he's pushing the right buttons, then all the more reason to feel like they have the right guy at head coach. Okay, do they have the right guy at quarterbacks been the question since we drafted this Duke kid, right? Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley, who I cheer for all the time. They've led the Giants, those two, to two wins. Offensively, what do you think the biggest reason for a Giants victory would be tonight if they get the win? Saquon, especially because they are going up against, you mentioned Micah Parsons. Oof. He's the reason the Giants would lose the game. Saquon is the key to unlock maybe a trump card and the X factor to answer Micah. And we saw it last year. If anybody remembers, the play where Saquon stepped on Jordan Lewis's foot turns his left ankle, and this Giants season goes down with him. Earlier that play, he beats Micah Parsons on a slant route man-to-man. -man. If Jones puts that ball on the money, he's off to the races for a 75-yard touchdown. Who knows where it goes? Right. So that plays a good microcosm, K, of the fact that Jones not always getting it done, but the fact that the Giants might have the answer with that tandem there. You love to see it. Am I going to see Kayvon Thibodeau tonight in his NFL debut? 
You are. He says <gasps> we are. Yeah. He says we do. Yeah. Made for the spotlight. Doesn't he feel like that? He feels like that kind of player. Um, and he, you know, as much as everybody in Giants fans want and expect the pass rush to explode from Kayvon, I actually think he might bring more in the running game especially against a team with the, like the Cowboys who, let's face it, their biggest home run hitter is Tony Pollard oh, yeah, running back out of the backfield. Yeah. So I think that, that he could make maybe the most impact there. Uh, Eric Weddle comes on our show every week, and he loves Wink Martindale. Have you interacted <laughs> with him? Do you agree yeah. that his impact is, is huge and he deserves you know, We're giving Dable a lot of credit. Should we throw some Wink's way? Yes, and give Dable some credit for hiring him, and then give credit to Wink for – coming up with a plan every week. It's two linebackers week one against Tennessee and Derrick Henry. It's three safeties on the field with McKinney down on the defensive line for half the game against Christian McCaffrey and the Panthers to combat their speed. This is a guy who feels like he's owed a head, he's beyond owed a head coaching opportunity. So all he can do right now is put his head down and be the reason that his team still as a defensive coordinator is two and oh. It's not just the scheme though, it's also the attitude um, but right. you heard it, you know, he talked about Cooper Rush. He praised Cooper Rush and said, you know, he'll probably be a head coach at 38. He's so smart and he's an offensive guy. That's always how it works in this league. So a little bit of bitterness from Wink too, but he harnesses it in a healthy way. And you can see it come out with his players on the field. Use that bitterness to, uh, you know, gift Cooper Rush his first loss as an NFL starter. That would be pretty incredible. Big one in the NFC East tonight. Thank you so much, Pat Leonard, from the New York Daily News. More on Good Morning or I almost said Good Morning Football. That's how tired I am this morning. Nope. More on Up and Adams after this. I do have a prediction for tonight's game, but not until Lara Overton joins me. We became best friends over the weekend, and I will talk to her. That I'm not best friends with him. That's blue. Blue and I not friends, although he finessed that pretty well. I think my hair still smells like shaving cream. Back on Up and Adams, uh, I think we're waiting for Lara Overton to join us. I think that awful mascot, Blue, probably cut the wires to her microphone because she wanted to hang out with us. She, of course, covers the Colts with the Colts. They just gotten themselves a big win over a well-rested Chiefs team that was looking very dominant. We'll get into the ins and outs of that. I mean, Tony Romo was talking about that sun getting in the eyes of the Chiefs players. Bit of an excuse, I think. I think it was a dominant performance, a smart playing by Matt Ryan and company and, and the defense, of course, to do what they can do. So we're waiting to meet her. I, I don't know what we're supposed to do for, in the meantime, Conrad. So in, in, in the meantime, Kay, in uh -huh. the meantime, you know, we can sit here and talk about just how great of experience we did have in Annapolis before we get to Lara. What is this Ron Rivera tweet? Well, I mean, we were highlighting great things that are happening in the NFL mm -hmm. and Ron Rivera naturally is just doing more great things, you know? So the somebody said, I had no idea Ron Rivera was helping out my home island, Puerto Rico, throughout Hurricane Maria and now Fiona. I respect this man. So the concept of this, I think, and that doesn't surprise me one bit. Do no. we have any details on what this is, Conrad? What no. what he's doing? No, he's just, he's, he's, he's been helping out with uh, the Relief Foundation. How? Did, did we look up how? <laughs> No, I want to know how. I know. We're, Brian, look that up. I'd love to see that. Yeah. The point is we're trying to uh, highlight goodness going on and catch people doing good around the league. So I, we'll have to build on that and sort of figure it out. I thought we had details on that. I, I, you guys texted it to me. Yeah. Uh, but we, I, I definitely want to know. Not surprising, though, that Ron Rivera is no, doing good Ron wherever Rivera's he can. One of the best guys in the NFL, right? I yeah. mean, just pound for pound, one of the nicest guys. And, you know, I, I know we're trying to get Laura on right now. This is the beauty of doing live television as we, we got to see with Scott Van Pelt. What's uh, on tomorrow's show? On tomorrow's show? Yeah. We have Darius Butler tomorrow. We have Love Jeff that. Schwartz coming on tomorrow. Darius Butler's going to be uh, jumping out of his seat crazy happy. His Dolphins are 3-0. I mean. Doing everything. His Colts got an upset win over Mahomes and company. He's living his best life. He absolutely is living his best life, you know. And I major props to Darius for calling it before the season started. A lot of people were like, yeah, I think the Dolphins can be good. And Darius is like, no, you all don't get it. The Dolphins are going to win the AFC East. Not a lot of people bought into it. Whoa, what was that? You know, and it's still not buying I don't know, because everyone's saying, like, they, you know, what did this change that they won? Are the Bills not still the favorites in the East, even though they lost? No, you're right. They're, they're still the favorites, but that was still a big win. I mean, the fact that Tua got knocked out of the game, and there's a whole situation around that going on. What do but, they have to do to beat them again in Buffalo, I guess, to, to change the narrative? To change the narrative? I think that you would have to win in Buffalo. And if they sweep them, won't people still think the Bills are the best team in the East? I just think it's impossible. I mean, look, the Bills in the first half of that game yesterday were just moving the ball at will. They had a 10-minute drive in the third quarter that sucked up so much energy from the Miami defense. Yeah. And I think Miami continuing to go through these guys, like, they really are becoming like the new cardiac kids. Like, they went through a crazy game against the Ravens that they had no reason to be in that game. 28 points in the fourth quarter to come back and win. And then you had this game against the Bills where you shut down Josh Allen in the second half.
Yeah. I, I know I know that uh, that Buffalo missed a couple kicks, but Miami's the real deal. They have the offensive power, but their defense is legit. Very legit. Uh, do we have Lara? I, I, I'm trying to check right now to see if we have Lara. I don't think Jason's saying we don't have her. Lara, we apologize that we can't get you on. We will try to f get you on tomorrow, of course. Congratulations to the Colts. My big oh, take. Actually, she's good. We got her. She's, of course, she... that the AFC South was super, super spicy, and it really included that. I think we do have Lara here. If we can get her. Lara! Hi! Can you hear me? Hey, girl, just keeping your seat warm here in studio. Unfortunately, I don't know what the technical difficulties are. I think there's still shaving cream. That's it. Maybe in all of our equipment That's from it. all of the antics on Friday hey, afternoon. Hey, congratulations on the win, kiddo. Thanks so much. You're one, one, and one Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> Tell me about the, you know, I know that you are very close to the team. We love having you here on the show. Hopefully you'll come on again when we have a little more time. We have just over a minute left here. But uh, the offense seems to be night and day with Michael Pittman in and out of the lineup. What were your takeaways from this game? My takeaways were that they never got high and low. Very steady over the course of that game, even with the rookies that you had offensively playing as significantly as they did. I mean, hello, Jelani Woods. Welcome to the NFL. Two catches, two touchdowns. This is a guy who grew up in Atlanta playing quarterback. The first jersey he ever owned was a Matt Ryan Falcons oh, jersey. That. And then his first catch, first catch as a pro is from the guy he idolized growing up so full circle moment but one of the things I talked with Stefan Gilmore afterwards and the defensive performance was so incredible when you look at Kansas City under Patrick Mahomes at quarterback 32 and 2 when they hold opponents to 20 points or fewer there we go both losses coming against the Indianapolis Colts 2019 and then yesterday's game I was telling you we hung out all night on Friday and I said I just don't think the Chiefs are ready and then Andy Reid sort of admitted that he didn't have his guys ready yeah, you, you did. I think you, you kind of spoke that into existence a little <laughs> bit. Just the extended layoff that they had. They had so much time after the Thursday night game. But I'm a huge credit to the Colts. And it was by far not a perfect game all around. I thought defensively really strong. The best day for special teams. Offensively, a lot to clean up, but a lot of good things to build You're on. You're amazing. Look at her taking a time cue. We got 10 seconds left. That is the brilliant Lair Overton with the Colts. And Shaquille Leonard, get back on the field. We'll be back.